In this presentation, an intra-articular fracture of the distal radius will be treated with dorsal double plate fixation using 2.4 variable angle LCP dorsal distal radius plates. The objectives of this presentation are to identify the clinical indications for dorsal double plating and preoperative planning, to show the principles of the variable angle locking system, the patient position and the approach, the instruments needed, the approach on the bone model, and the reduction and fixation of the fracture. The indications for dorsal double plating are a displaced dorso ulnar fragment, reconstruction of the radiocarpal joint, and associated scaphoid fracture or carpal ligament tear. A formal arthrotomy through a dorsal approach allows visualization of the joint and the proximal carpal row. This clinical example under CT and in traction shows a persistent displacement of the radial column and the dorsal ulnar fragment. For dorsal double plating, the intermediate column as well as the radial column are fixed individually with a 2.4 variable angle LCP dorsal distal radius plate. The variable angle plate holes allow up to 15 degrees off axis screw angulation in all directions to address any fracture pattern. The plates are positioned at an angle of 70 to 90 degrees to each other. They are pre contoured to minimize the need for contouring. If contouring should be necessary, undercuts and bending notches allow easy contouring while preserving the variable angle locking holes. The funnel-shaped end of the variable angle LCP drill sleeve allows the drilling of variable angle holes at the desired angle. The fixed angle end of the variable angle LCP drill sleeve only allows the drill bit to follow the nominal trajectory of the variable angle locking holes. The instruments needed to insert cortex screws are the 2.4 universal drill guide, the 1.8mm drill bit, the depth gauge, and the short T8 star drive screwdriver shaft and handle. The instruments needed to insert the locking screws are the 2.4 universal variable angle LCP drill sleeve, the 1.8mm drill bit, the short T8 star drive screwdriver shaft and the 0.8 newton meter torque limiting attachment with handle. The 1.25 mm plate reduction wire with small stop is useful to hold the plate in position on the bone. For the dorsal approach, the model is placed as shown. The styloid process is palpated along with Lister's tubercle. A straight incision is made. A L-shaped incision of the retinaculum is made along the extensor pollicis tendon. The retinaculum and the subcutaneous tissue are retracted. The intermediate column is approached by subperiosteal preparation. The tendons of the fourth compartment are retracted. A transverse arthrotomy is performed to allow visualization of the joint and the proximal carpal row. The articular block is restored by reducing the intermediate column fragment to the radial fragment. The block is secured with a large pointed reduction forceps. Any step off should be corrected now. The extra articular extension deformity is corrected and the articular block is held in place temporarily with two K wires. The intermediate column plate is applied first. The correct position is determined.
The 1.25mm plate reduction wire with a small stop is used to hold the plate in position on the bone. The first screw to be inserted is a standard 2.4mm Cortex screw in the middle of the oblong combi hole of the plate. The depth is measured. The appropriate length screw is inserted. The plate reduction wire is removed. At this stage, it is important to check the reduction and the placement of the plate under image intensification before continuing with plate fixation. The fixed angle end of the variable angle LCP drill sleeve is inserted into the most proximal plate hole. The 1.8mm drill bit is used to make the screw hole. The hole follows the nominal trajectory of the variable angle plate hole. The depth can be read off the scale on the drill sleeve and the mark on the drill. The appropriate length locking screw is inserted and fully tightened with the 0.8 Newton meter torque limiting attachment. The funnel shaped end of the variable angle LCP drill sleeve is inserted into one of the plate holes in the distal arm of the plate. A hole is prepared with the 1.8mm drill bit at the desired angle. The depth is measured. A locking screw of appropriate length is inserted and fully tightened. The funnel shaped end of the variable angle LCP drill sleeve is inserted into the other plate hole in the distal arm of the plate. A hole is prepared with the 1.8mm drill bit at the desired angle. After the depth is measured, a second locking screw is inserted into the arm of the plate. The reduction forceps is removed. The radial column plate is now applied. The position of the plate is adjusted. The 1.25mm plate reduction wire with small stop is used to hold the plate in position on the bone. After preparing a neutral hole, a 2.4mm cortex screw is inserted through the oblong combi hole of the plate using standard technique. The plate reduction wire is removed. At this stage, it is important to check placement of the plate under image intensification before continuing with plate fixation. A locking screw is inserted through the most proximal plate hole using the nominal angle technique. Two locking screws are added at the distal end of the plate using the variable angle technique. The articular congruency and correct extra articular screw placement is checked through the arthrotomy. The post-operative x-rays show good restoration of the anatomy and correct placement of the implants. The one-year follow-up shows the fracture has healed with a good functional outcome. This presentation has demonstrated the clinical indications for dorsal double plating and pre-operative planning, the principles of the variable angle locking system, the patient position and the approach, the instruments needed, the approach on the bone model, and the reduction in fixation of the fracture.